here to give you two examples and a proof of this theorem that is a nice, easy way to calculate residues of quotients as long as uh, the, both the top and the bottom are holomorphic and, uh, and you have these conditions here, zero multiples to one in the bottom and not a zero on the top. So the first example is I'm going to calculate the residue at z equals zero of uh, seven plus two z over five z plus three z to the ninth. All right, so the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure that the top doesn't, doesn't go to zero. If I plug in zero on the top, I get seven, which is not equal to zero. So, so this part holds. Now I need to make sure it's a zero multiplicity one in the bottom, and I can do that by factoring. Right, the bottom becomes z times five plus three z to the eighth. That's really z to the one. And if I plug in zero into just this thing, I get five. So that tells me that, that it really is a zero multiplicity one. So the residue is really, you just plug in zero into the top, and you plug in zero into the bottom, but you have to take the derivative of the bottom. So take the derivative and evaluate it at z equals zero. So you get seven over, well that's gonna be five. So the residue is seven fifths. Isn't that nice? That's much easier than calculating the Roland series. But you can only use it, right? So here's, if I change this instead to five z squared, this theorem wouldn't hold because this would be a zero of multiplicity two. So it only works sometimes, but it's really nice when it works. Here's a second example. Let's find the residue at z equals two pi of, uh, how about cotangent z? Okay, well, that might not be clear how to use this, but of course you know that cotangent is equal to cos cosine z over sine z. Oh, I know that by plugging two pi into sine z, I get a zero. And in fact, the, the Taylor series around 2 pi is equal to, it's the normal thing basically, except you have z minus 2 pi, uh, is, is equal to something that looks like this. And notice if I factor out just one of these z minus 2 pi's, I'm going to get 1 minus this thing squared over 3 factorial plus blah 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 blah. And this one, when I factor it out and get a 1 here, that means that when I plug in 2 pi into the, the factored thing, I'm going to get 2 pi minus, or z minus 2 pi times 1 minus 0 plus 0. So, in short, this is equal to z minus 2 pi times 1 minus z minus 2 pi squared over 3 factorial plus a bunch of higher terms. This does not go to 0 when you plug in 2 pi. So this really is a 0 of multiplicity 1. So this is equal to cosine 2 pi over the derivative of sine, which is cosine, and I plug in 2 pi there. So that's equal to 1. So we're done. All right, so I just quickly wrote down some stuff, and now I'm going to run through the proof of this. So I have two holomorphic functions near z0. I'm, let's just assume that z0 is equal to 0 for convenience. Uh, if they're holomorphic, that means they have power series associated with them. So here's the a's belong to f, the b's belong to g, but also g of zero should equal zero. If I plug in zero here, I get b naught. That tells me that the b naught has to be zero. So the power series here really looks like this. So now if I divide these two using the old school, high school way of dividing polynomials, even though they're infinite, uh, a naught plus a one z plus a two z squared plus da 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 da, right? So I look at the smallest term here. What do I need to multiply by to get a naught? Well, I need to multiply by a naught over b1 times 1 over z. And when I multiply that through, I end up with a naught, because that cancels. And I end up with, I don't know, a naught b2 b1z. And then I can subtract these plus da 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 da, and add up with 0. So, what this tells me is that the Laurent series is going to have uh, a term a naught over b1 is going to be the residue. But I can get a naught by plugging in 0 into here. So I plug in 0, I get a naught. I plug in b1, I, gives, I can get by plugging 0 into the derivative, which causes the z.